Hey guys, Evan from Griffin, and thanks for tuning into this episode of Tech Tips. Today we're gonna to be talking about the PSR 5 and 7 suppressors. I'm really excited about these suppressors personally. Um, I, one of the first cans I ever bought uh, when I was, you know, many years ago, was an OpSync 12th model suppressor um, from the famous, you know, SPR series of rifles in an early global war on terror. Uh, I thought the can was really cool because it had pretty low blowback, didn't add a lot of system length, etc. cetera. Um, other people were doing those types of silencers at the time, and Griffin was also doing those uh, types of silencers, the Rista and the SBR. Uh, those suppressors we kind of legacied because muzzle device mounted silencers, traditional silencers, uh, was kind of the focus, and we did a lot of R&D on those silencers, got their performance way down, um, or way up, and sound signature way down. And so finally we had a, a, a break a couple years ago and started having some more time to do R&D on over the barrel silencers again. And so we brought out these cans. They've been in the works for a long time. Um, they're super high performance, very lightweight, but also super good for sound performance, blowback reduction, etc. So really excited about them. The PSR5 over here is the 556 version. Uh, this is the specific 223 version. It's gonna be just a little bit shorter than the seven. Um, it is 8.4 inches in length, whereas the seven is 8.9 inches in length. Now, uh, keep in mind that when you actually mount the silencer, the mounted length over the uh, muzzle device is only going to be about four inches or so, uh, four and a half inches, something like that. So most of the system length uh, in the silencer is actually, or I, I should say about half of it, um, maybe a little less than half is slightly is behind the muzzle of the gun. So it keeps the package really compact. That's why people really like these types of silencers uh, because it keeps the gun overall length short. And the huge blast chamber in these silencers, which is effectively 60% of the length of the silencer, as, as you can see here with the welds, um, makes the silencer really have a really low back pressure. Uh, we put uh, six different patents into this product. So a lot of utili utility uh, work, a lot of uh, intellectual property work are in these suppressors uh, from the mounting system to the flash cap to, you know, uh, the wrench geometry, uh, the internal uh, EcoFlow baffles. There's just tons of tech in these cans. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna get into the specifications like I touched on, 8.4 inches on the five, 8.9 inches on the seven. They're both a 1.5 inch outside diameter. The five is 14.9 ounces, and the seven is 15.8 ounces, so very lightweight. Uh, we got that those low weights because we are using tubeless technology. So these are 17.4 stainless and 7.18 Inconel in terms of the material, but they are tubeless laser welded silencers, so the weight is just really low, um, although the durability and the service life is high. Uh, for sound performance, on this Mark 1 16 inch 556 gun, we achieve an average of 129 and a half decibels with the 556 can. Sub 130, that's pretty crazy. It sounds very quiet. And for the 762 version, for the 30 cal version, on a 16 inch AR10, so basically like this, except it an AR-10, which would be the 7.62 millimeter or the 308 Winchester, we're getting 137.6 at the muzzle for our peak uh, decibel readings. And that's using the best equipment out there, the BNK Pulse system, uh, which is a great system. Um, so features on the product, like I said, it has the pressure reduction cap on there. This was a design workup to allow the EcoFlow baffles, which are internal, the blast reducing baffles to work so, so that the sound pressure is as minimal as possible. We carry that technology through to the end cap, so the end cap also breathes. Uh, these slots are tuned such that our flash is also mitigated as much as possible. So they actually help arrest flash as well as the flash cap on the front. Um, so there's a lot going on there. Um, other features, obviously the tubeless like I talked about, You've got wrench geometry back here, should for whatever reason the silencer get kind of stuck on the gun and you want to put a wrench on there. Um, with proper maintenance, that should not happen, but we put that there just in case. And then the dual lock uh, mounting system, this is something that you're seeing more of in Griffin Armament. We have it with the HRT, the five and seven, the muzzle mounted varieties of these cans. And then we incorporate it also into these next generation over the barrel silencers. So I'm not gonna go into a huge 
uh, conversation on the dual lock mounting system. If you want to check an in-depth video on that, I suggest you look at the dual lock five and seven video. We'll put the hyperlink in the description below. So check that out. But it's just a super great mounting system. Um, it features a, a dual locking, active locking mechanism with no wear prone parts. Relatively simple, but extremely robust. And uh, I have the muzzle brake, which is the factory shipped option. So these silencers do include a muzzle brake for you, um, just so you know. Um, and the only difference with this dual lock muzzle brake versus the muzzle mounted options is that the taper that the uh, silencer rests against is way forward. So we're increasing the span of the taper, the length from the, um, from the taper that is traditionally back here on the uh, muzzle mounted dual lock ones. And we have that here as well. But we put a secondary taper in front which um, allows a two inch span essentially to control the, uh, the straightness, if you will, of the silencer, the, the, um, the bore, so that it's a very accurate system. So that even if your Acme thread gets damaged, even if uh, you know, your tapers are not super clean, this will be a really repetitive silencer for accuracy, POI shift, etc. So this is really looked at as our most accurate suppressor, that's why the PSR series is called the uh, Precision Suppressor Rifle, essentially. Um, so that's pretty much your features and rundown for the muzzle device options. We have the muzzle brake like you see here, but then we also have a flash hider. So this is a three prong uh, tuned flash hider, uh, just a really high quality flash hider. If flash is your number one concern, then go with the flash hider. This does not come with the suppressors. The, the muzzle device that comes with the suppressors is the two port pallet and muzzle brake. Um, I prefer the muzzle brakes because they reduce baffle erosion of the blast baffle, which is the first baffle in the suppressor. Um, that's gonna give you your longest service life. But if you are a professional marksman, uh, perhaps on a SWAT team or a sniper or someone like that, you may want to have the flash hider just in case you have to take an unsuppressed shot and you want to stay uh, completely clandestine and unseen. So those are your options. The muzzle devices are available in half by 28 and 5 ace 24, both 20, 22 caliber and 30 caliber. Um, getting onto the mounting demonstration, I'll show you that guys uh, really quickly. So I've got the five, the dual lock or PSR five here. Um, I'm just gonna make sure this is unlocked. So I'm gonna pull back on this locking ring, twist it to the center unlock position. And then I'm gonna index it over the muzzle brake like you would normally and tighten this thing down. Give it a nice firm twist at the end. Just a nice little tight grasp. Don't, you know, you don't need tons of force on this, but you don't want it to be loose either, okay? So you want it to be kind of tight on there. And then we'll take that locking ring and just twist it, snap it back so that the, lo and the rear of the locking ring is flush with the rear of the suppressor. If you have it in this configuration here, this would not be locked. You'd want to go to the other locking position. There's two locking positions, so one of them will always work for you. Then it's on, it's super rigid. Do all your shooting. Make sure that you allow the suppressor to uh, cool to ambient temperature before removal because we don't want to burn your hand. Okay, but after it's been cooled, then you can take the uh, locking collar, push it forward, twist it to the unlock position, and unscrew it. So that's the mounting demonstration. Uh, for maintenance and service life, I'm going to get into that quickly with you. So there is a consideration with every silencer, it doesn't matter if it's a PSR silencer or anything else, you want the muzzle device to be clean, um, both the exterior of the muzzle device itself, as well as the interior of the mount of the silencer. So those mating surfaces need to be clean, um, ideally, and that's what's going to give you the best accuracy. Uh, make sure that you don't have any fouling or galling of the mounting system over time. You know, if you allow copper bits and, you know, things like that to jam themselves into the system so that it's tight and it's scraping and stuff like that, then you, you will wear it out faster than you should. So what I recommend is just a little general purpose brass brush, okay? Um, stainless steel is going to put unnecessary wear on the components. Um, so, and, and vinyl uh, or plastic brushes just don't work very well. So brass is really, is really proper. And I'm just gonna take this brass brush and brush the Acme thread here to make sure that everything is clean and clear of this thread. And kind of in so doing, I'm also hitting the taper that's on the front edge of that. So you can see this 
this taper that's just forward of the acne thread itself. That taper also needs to be clean. You kind of get them both at the same time since they're so close together. All right, the splines, they're not really gonna see any uh, buildup of carbon or anything because this taper is going to seal the suppressor so that carbon and copper can't really come backwards. But if you do have, you know, dust and dirt from just being in the environment outside in the field, you know, you wanna make sure that that stuff, little rocks, stuff like that is clear of there. Everything forward of here really does not matter except for the taper on the end of the muzzle brake. So that is an interfacing taper. And if you look inside of the silencer, actually deep down inside of there, you will see on the front support, there is actually a bevel that interfaces with the front of the muzzle base there. So the way that you clean that is with the one inch pipe brush. Okay, we use Odie's one inch pipe brushes for this mounting system. So you just put that in there. I like to turn these back and forth, you know, for five or 10 seconds, just to make sure that I get all my stuff, all my debris out of there. I tip the silencer up so that gravity can do its work and stuff can fall out if there is anything in there, okay? And then with this mounting system, you wanna go actually past this to the next front support. So you wanna go past just the mounting system so you can also brush that front taper support that we were talking about, okay? Boom, so that's pretty much done. Um, now what you want to do also with it that I recommend is use some anti-seize. Now you can use stuff out of your toolbox if you want to. Uh, granted that stuff is usually a lower heat rating than what we would really suggest. Uh, Griffin Armour suggests a high heat uh, resistance uh, anti-seize product. Uh, we carry Loxys 2020 on the website. You can buy a little bit from us or you can find it on industrial websites. But essentially this is a 2000 Fahrenheit rated or I think it's 2300 actually. It's very hot so hotter than you're ever going to have to deal with. But essentially, I take a dab of this and I just go over the taper on the outside of the muzzle device. You don't have to put gobs of it on there, just a thin coating is fine. Maybe a little bit on this other taper, okay? And that's pretty much it. So now I've cleaned it, you know, I've, I've re-lubed it. Um, now when I go to the range next and I do a lot, a lot of shooting, I'm not gonna have to worry about any copper binding or anything like that because I cleaned the mounting system and I lubricated it properly. So um, as long as you're doing that, you know, a little bit of preventive maintenance goes a long way. Uh, I would expect about 50,000 rounds of useful service life from these suppressors. Um, like I said, they are 17-4 stainless steel and 718 Inconel. So the graded material is really great. Um, they'll pretty much last a lifetime the way that most of us shoot. Um, if for whatever reason you did have any issues with them, uh, you can depend on our perpetual lifetime warranty. Griffin Armour has been in business for close to 20 years now. We're a privately owned company. We're fiscally healthy and conservative. And so it's a great warranty. Essentially, if you have any issues at all, that are just kind of out of the normal, out of the norm. So not like a general wear or something like that, but let's say for some reason, it just gets bound up or it's not working for you. Contact our customer service department. They'll get it situated right away. Um, but essentially you can expect uh, 50,000 round of service life for this or more probably more than that even, uh, honestly, because most of y'all are gonna be putting this on longer rifles, uh, which is gonna be, increase that, that rating even more. So um, most barrels like this barrel and, and this uh, Griffin Mark I are gonna have an accurate service life of around five to 7,000 rounds. Um, so that kind of gives you a little bit of a, a mental note in terms of the silencer will generally outlast many barrel changes uh, to the host weapon. So really service life is nothing to worry about. Um, but that's a good discussion on that. If you do full auto and stuff like that, obviously it will decrease the service life. But if you're using these silencers for what they're intended for, which is accurate, you know, semi-automatic or bolt action fire, they will basically last, last a lifetime. So we talked about cleaning, um, durability, uh, talked about the mounting systems, the features, uh, the specifications. Uh, so I really hope you guys enjoy this silencer. Uh, lastly, before I let you guys go, I do want to uh, give you one insight on gunsmithing. And so the silencers, uh, these silencers are a little bit of a specialty product when compared to muzzle mounted silencers, which are so prevalent in the industry. So I have an M40 A5 Marine Corps sniper rifle here in front of me. Historic gun, really cool. And essentially what the Marine Corps snipers did 
was they elected for over-the-barrel silencers with this generation of equipment. And they had to turn the outside profile of the barrel to accept these over-the-barrel muzzle devices. And they did this for Surefire silencers at the time. Um, but we have basically designed our muzzle devices to be very similar to the over-the-barrel type specs for that. So what you will need to do is if you have a thick bull-barreled gun like this, okay, you will need to get a gunsmith to lathe, turn that down for you um, and basically fit this muzzle device for you. Um, like the Griffin Mark I that you saw, the 16-inch Mark I, that's a direct fitment. You can just put it right over the top. But essentially, if you look at the manual PDF, which we will hyperlink below, there's a little uh, print for you to look at. And what we're telling you is that you need to have an outside diameter on the barrel of no more than 0.775 inches. Okay, if it's thicker than that, then this will not slide over. And you need to have at least 1.95 inches rear of this thread shoulder here. So you need that 775 outside diameter at least uh, 1.95 inches rear of this thread shoulder. So that's basically the step profile. Once you have that, then you have fitment for the dual lock PSR muzzle devices. In terms of muzzle device installation, the, they are gonna come with shims, so you are going to need to still time them. The muzzle devices do come with three quarter inch wrench flats, as you can see here. So you can put your three quarter inch wrench on that, the muzzle brake or the flash hider. So they both have uh, tool geometry for that. Um, so that's pretty much, that pretty much covers the PSR cans inside and out. I uh, hope you guys really like them and enjoy them. If you have any questions beyond what this video can provide for you, feel free to hit up our customer service department. They'd be happy to help you out. Thank you for watching. I hope to catch you next time.